Both engines stuck on overspeed, Cathay 78C. Both the engines of the plane got stuck in mid-flight. There were 309 passengers and 13 staff members on board. The crew of Flight 78C was unable to modify the thrust power of the engines as the plane approached Hong Kong. The plane, an Airbus A330-342, suffered minor damage. In the ensuing slight evacuation, 57 people were injured, with one of them receiving critical injuries. What happened to Cathay 78C? What was the reason? Want to know more? Stay tuned to find out more about Cathay 78C, whose both engines are stuck at overspeed. Hello everyone! Welcome to Mayday, your aviation-friendly channel where we walk you through high-profile air disasters to uncover how and why they happened. So subscribe now to climb into the cockpit and press the bell icon for an experience you won't soon forget. With that being said, let's take off. Flight 780 of Cathay Pacific flew from Surabaya, Indonesia, to Hong Kong, China. The airplane experienced two engine failures, but landed safely at Hong Kong International Airport, its final destination. The flight crew of Flight 780 included two Australian pilots, Captain Malcolm Waters and First Officer David Hayhoe. The International Federation of Airline Pilots' Associations presented both pilots with the Polaris Award, the highest honor granted to a civil pilot. There were early indications of impending danger. As soon as the airplane is operational, it begins its descent to Hong Kong, 165 miles away from the airport. The plane began to tremble shortly after taking off, and weird noises can be heard. An alarm is sounding in the cockpit. The warning, engine to stall, emerges when they examine their flight computer. Captain Waters powers it down to idle in case of damage, notwithstanding the lack of justification for the stall. The swaying and rumbling halt indicated that the pilots made the proper decision because the engine was no longer providing thrust. The pilots must rely on engine one to bring them to Hong Kong. Captain Waters announces a pan, which is the most serious degree of emergency. Following the pan, the air traffic controller gives them precedence over all other aircraft, ensuring that they receive all of the assistance they require to land. The emergency services got prepared for the approaching plane. Captain Waters assumes command of the plane and continues its descent. Everything is in place until the plane begins to shake again. The flight computer displays the message, Engine 1 stall. Engine 1 has ceased to function. The jet will not make it to any airport if it continues without engines. Captain Waters shuts down Engine 1 and the plane transforms into a glider. Both pilots are stunned and terrified at the prospect of having to land in the South China Sea. Captain Waters chooses to try to drive the engine thrust back up as First Officer Heiho goes through the ditching checklist, but neither engine responds. First Officer Heiho issues a mayday to inform air traffic control that they are in an emergency. US Airways Flight 1549 safely ditched in the Hudson River a year before this tragedy, with no casualties. The South China Sea, on the other hand, is more tumultuous than the Hudson, so ditching may not be as successful. Captain Waters switches to manual control since ditching is safer this way. On the other hand, Captain Waters has an idea. Captain Waters carefully raises the thrust lever for engine one on the ship. He performs this to gently inject fuel into the engine and see if it would start again. Captain Waters notices that the A330's slow motion is operating by looking at the instruments. Slowly but steadily, the engine gains thrust. Captain Waters keeps revving the engine higher, unsure if he will be able to get it to full power. As he gets it up to full power, the engine starts to make surges and popping noises, so he reduces the thrust to 74%, which the engine can now handle. They can land and begin to level out while maintaining their height with just one engine. The crew is getting ready to land the plane. On the other hand, has doubts about the functional engine's ability to deliver them to the runway. Waters sets the engine on idle as the plane approaches the airport, ensuring that they would make it to the runway. The passengers got informed of the ongoing situation and the cabin staff got instructed to prepare for landing. For the landing, First Officer Heiho extends the flaps and lowers the landing gear. The flight rotates to face the two runways, both ready for landing. When a clicking sound filled the cockpit, it was the overspeed alert, and they were only a minute away from a touchdown. The overspeed alert indicates that the plane is flying too fast and the crew is unsure why it is not slowing down. Captain Waters double-checks the controls and confirms that everything is in working condition. When Waters sees it, though, his blood boils. Engine 1 is still producing 74% of its maximum output. 
74% is far too high for a safe landing, especially in Hong Kong, because Hong Kong International Airport is located on an island. Any aircraft that exceeds the runway's length will get forced to land in the water. The flight could not conduct a go-around, and the pilot must now land the plane with only one engine operating at near full power. Their speed, which is more than 100 knots faster than it should be, causes the flight computer to believe the plane is not even attempting to land. The cockpit got filled with pull-up and terrain alerts. The plane descends, and Captain Waters slams the A330's nose down hard, causing it to crash into the earth. The plane bounced around on the runway, unable to stay on the ground due to its high thrust. Captain Waters lands the plane solidly on the ground after another hard push, just brushing the left wing on the runway. The flight crew activates reverse propulsion and works as hard as they can to break down the barriers. They rapidly discover that Engine 2's thrust reverser got broken and that only Engine 1's thrust reverser is operational. The jet is approaching the runway's end, but is slowing down. The plane comes to a halt at the end of runway 07R, having used nearly 8,800 feet of runway. There is one final point. The A330's gear did not get designed to handle such high speeds, and the crew wonders if they have overheated. The crew evacuates the plane because all of the wheels are approaching 1000 degrees Celsius. The wheels were emitting smoke, according to eyewitnesses. During the evacuation, 57 people got hurt, and 10 of them were sent to the hospital. A superabsorbent polymer, a material that aids in the removal of water from fuel, was discovered in the aircraft's fuel tanks. As a result, the gasoline became polluted, causing the engine to malfunction. The landing gear suffered minor damage as a result of the aircraft's rough landing. The aircraft was on its way to Hong Kong after another two hours, about 203 kilometers southeast of Hong Kong International Airport. The aircraft's ECAM indicated engine 1 CTL CIS fault and engine 2 stall in quick succession. The second notification indicated a compressor stall. It means a catastrophic engine failure. The flight crew responded to a stall in the number one engine compressor and announced a mayday. The crew requested a pan-pan with Hong Kong air traffic control, asking for the quickest route to the airport and a priority landing. The spinning fan speed of the number one engine gradually increased to around 74% of N1, while the number two engine stayed at around 17% of N1, giving enough push to reach Hong Kong. After calling a mayday for an A330, the crew used manual brakes to bring the plane to a halt. At a ground speed of 426 km per hour, the aircraft came down hard on runway 07L, 11 minutes after declaring mayday. The captain ordered an emergency evacuation, which resulted in the injuries of 57 people, 10 of whom were sent to the hospital. A team of investigators investigated the accident from the Hong Kong Civil Aviation Department. The French Aviation Bureau BEA, and the United Kingdom's Air Accidents Investigation Branch AAIB. The National Transportation Safety Committee NTSC of Indonesia, and the National Transportation Safety Board NTSB of the United States of America, and officials from Airbus, Rolls-Royce, and Cathay Pacific were all involved in the inquiry. For analysis, data from the Digital Flight Data Recorder, Cockpit Voice Recorder, and Quick Access Recorder got retrieved. The engines, engine control systems, and fuel systems were the focus of the inquiry. The engine's fuel systems got discovered to get polluted with spherical particles after an inspection. The Accident Investigation Division of the Hong Kong Civil Aviation Department determined that these spherical particles were to blame for the accident. The SAP particles, which were a part of the filter monitors put in a fuel dispenser at Huanda Airport, seized the fuel metering unit's primary metering valves. As the plane reached Hong Kong, the valves got discovered to be locked in positions, matching the measured thrust output of each engine. Other engine components somehow got contaminated with the particles and engine number 2's variable stator vane controller got seized. Spherical particles got discovered throughout the fuel system, including the fuel tanks. The particles affected fuel tests taken at Huanda International Airport. During the development of additional airplane parking bays at Huanda International Airport, the gasoline delivery pipeline system used to refuel planes got enlarged. According to the inquiry, when the system came back into operation, not all protocols were followed, and salt water had mistakenly infiltrated the fuel supply. The presence of salt water in the pipeline system weakened the filter monitors, allowing SAP particles to enter the fuel. So, did the story give you chills? What do you think about this incident? Share your thoughts in the comments. That wraps up our video for today. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Press the bell icon to never miss breathtaking aviation stories. See you soon. Until then, peace.